So the challenge is a bit of innovation around program notes, and we thought we'd get together, myself and the management team, Mark Sampson, Michael Nelson, Ian Pledger, Alex Ravel, I get together and uh, have a bit of a chat around the program notes rather than just me talking at my blackboard. So we've got four subjects we're going to have a chat about. First one is 34-18. Um, that is, in the last two games, we've had 34 attempts at opponents' goals. They've had 18 at ours. Unfortunately, it resulted in two defeats. But we're not allowing ourselves to get down about that. We see that as quite a big step in the right direction. What we do know is that clinicality at both ends of the pitch, tidying up our defensive organisation and becoming better at putting the ball in the opponent's net is a big part of what we've got to do next. We've been working on that this week. Nelson's going to have a little chat around that. Yeah, just with the numbers, the, the numbers of chances created and shots at goal have went up in the last two games and the, the chances conceded have come down. So we are moving in the right direction. Um, the conversion rate of the chances we've got to goals we've scored is not quite there yet. We're not happy with that. So we've done a little bit of work yesterday around... Um, clinicality in the box and um, finishing those chances off and there was a marked improvement from when the session started to when the session ended um, with regards to the, the players who were involved in it. Um, a little bit timid in the finishes at the beginning of the session to really being clinical and aggressive and striking through the ball towards the end of the session um, and that's where we want to get to. We want to improve the, the shots created, um, the chances conceded but ultimately convert conversion rate to get higher as well. So that's what we've been focusing on the, the last few days. And a big, uh, that forms a big part of the identity that we're trying to create for the team here. It'd be very easy for us to all sink into the mindset that we're the bottom of the league, um, you know, number 92 of 92. Uh, we can't afford to think like that. We're, um, we're building towards something a lot better. We're trying to build tomorrow and we're not worrying about yesterday. We can't do anything about where we're at. What we can do is, is change where we're going for the future. So uh, everybody within the camp is focusing on an identity which is capable of winning our next game. We try and get ourselves in the right mindset to win the next game, game in, game out. Um, Alex has got some views on that. Yeah, I think one of the big things we've been, we've been looking at is, um, the, there's three, there's a triangle we've been talking about, is the way that you feel and the way that they think affects the way you act and they all interlock into each other. Um, and I think that's what we've been trying to create within the training ground is that when people come in, that they come in with a positive mood because that affects other people's actions um, and that affects other people's mental side as well. So I think being positive, creating winners in terms of training, really creating a real positive vibe when you win um, and making people, if they are on a losing team, say making them realise they want to be on that winning side um, to create a real positive feeling around, around the training ground, which in turn will, will feed onto, onto when we play. And, it's massive. When, when you are positive, you, def you play your best football. Um, when you're negative, you tend to shy away sometimes from the ball. It's just a natural thing that happens. So it's so important that when we come in here, we're positive because it affects the way they play and the way they think. And that will affect them on a Saturday. So that's what we've been, we've been working really hard around the training ground. There's been a lot of chat about a guy called Urban Mayer, who's a very successful American football coach um, out in the States. And uh, Urban Mayer's got a, a saying that he wants uncommon commitment to a common cause. We've got some great examples here of players who have had very little reward, but they've given phenomenal commitment. Uh, one of those is Sasha Bastian, who um, doesn't get a lot of reward in terms of playing minutes. When he played against Bristol Rovers, he was absolutely outstanding. He looked like a number one between the sticks. He didn't look like a deputy filling in. But he's obviously got strong competition with uh, Farms in such great form this season. Uh, Sasha's a great example of someone who day in day out does his job in the right way and the fact that he does his job in the right way means strikers have got something they really have to beat on the training ground which in turn sharpens them up. Um, Ian Pleasure works with the two goalkeepers um, and he'd just like to reinforce some points on that. Yeah, yeah Sasha's, it's no surprise that when he's come in to, to play in the game that he's performed very well because it, it's a reflection of what he does on the training ground. Um, for example, yesterday he came out, he worked half an hour earlier than, than anybody else, worked a, a very strong session, continued for another another hour and a half, and when the strikers asked for some finishing afterwards with a, with a gaffer, uh, he was there challenging them, still throwing himself about top corner, bottom corner, as strongly as he did in the, in the first half an hour that he worked. That wasn't, I say that wasn't for his benefit, of course it was for his benefit, but it, it was to help the, the rest of the team through 
the, the uh, common cause that, that we've been discussing. And as Alex and Agatha just mentioned there, that the positivity, the support process that he has in place, if, if you notice in any match day, uh, Sasha's always the first one to, to go and greet farms off the pitch at half time and at full time. Um, it's, it's no surprise that he gets his rewards when he does come into the, to the team. The positive energy that everyone's talking about is the fourth and final area that we're going to chat about. And um, we've seen eight, maybe nine signings by the close of business tonight. Um, and so obviously some players go out the door at, at the same time, we expect. Um, we, we've, we've had a view that you know, we can unite the squad in a different way. We can have more people with more of a role to play. And uh, that's been the focus of the transfer window. But I think we've sensed a difference in the energy, Mark, haven't we, during the course of this week, even? Yeah, absolutely. And I think... Not just from a playing perspective, we know we've been crying out for certain qualities from a playing area, certainly in those forward departments, but from a character perspective as well. And you can now feel that energy on the training ground. And ultimately, by the, the gaffer bringing in nine new players, potentially, that's going to be near a third of our squad. You know, one in three people now in this building is fresh, is energetic, is lively, has got a point to prove. And going back to a playing perspective, already we've seen the likes of Dabo, Cass, of leisurely, you have a big impact on the team and show that they were areas we need to strengthen and improve. And definitely from today's training session, the lads who've come in will certainly help us on the field, but also off it as well to make sure that every day here, although there can be some negativity around the league position, there's a real sense of ambition, a sense of positivity, a sense of where we could get. And you know, we want to achieve something now that you know we'll, we'll look back on a number of years to come and say that was pretty something pretty special. I think these lads are determined to come in and make a huge impact to this football club and obviously for themselves personally. I, I talked just now about uncommon commitment to a common cause. It's not normal that a management team um, spends so many hours at a, a training ground. Um, the guys around me, Mark, uh, Michael, Pledge and Alex, um, are all here from dawn until dusk right now, um, putting in the hard yards that are necessary to create winning. And you can all rest assured that not only within the management, but within the playing group, there's a real desire to turn around where we're at. We know that, in the end, hard work um, is the foundation of everything. Um, but it's also smart work, and I think there's a lot of intelligent people here thinking through the changes that are needed and forming the players that we've now got together into the team that we hope can go on and achieve what's necessary between now and the, now and the end of the season. So you're in safe hands, there's a lot of graft going on, um, and we know what it takes to get the, the team and the squad to where it needs to get to. Um, Mark, from the beginning, has been absolutely adamant that we should finish with a song. So we're going to hand over to Mark now to start the song. <laughs> and all the guys have promised me that they're going to um, join in. So, uh, Mark Sampson. You know, this is a guy who's straight in that bus. <laughs> uh, well, as a Welshman, obviously everyone knows I've got a fantastic singing voice and a range of, of, of songs I like to enjoy. Um, but in this particular moment, you know, I, I obviously trained hard this morning, so my voice is really struggling at the moment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Trying to get out. There must be a Tom Jones number you can remember, <laughs> surely. Well, obviously, the Six Nations started, so I think it'd be important for us all to stand. Uh, <laughs> by Helen. God save <laughs> the gracious Queen. Over and out.